Oczywiście taka sytuacja może zdarzyć się w najlepszym nawet na After Indiana's loss to the Knicks Tuesday, Miller went after Charles Smith on the way to the locker room after the game. Smaller numbers in his wallet led to big numbers on the court that night as Reggie scored 31. However, the Melvin goes to Sherman Douglas, whose nose actually appears to split in half. And note the blood for added realism. In this surprise, because we have learned to turn the other cheek. Danny Manning and Pete Myers in all talk, no action. Steven Seagal would cringe. But the Melvin goes to Zoe Morning in Morning's List. And you're on it. A basket? Oh, no, 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 no. He was pushed in the back by one of his teammates, and he pushed Danny Ainge down. Now, let's watch what happens. They're going to shove each other. Ainge bumps, and they shove. And right here's the right hook. Right there, Sedale, three, really. And here's where Danny Ainge, you see him staggering right now. He's going to go down. He is out on his feet right there, Gary. Well, Dan. They face the Knicks in Madison Square Garden this afternoon. There's a history in this series. You might remember when these teams waged playoff war against one another in the spring of 1992. Physical Pat Riley team taking the Bulls to seven games in the Eastern Conference semi. Affectionately yours when this week in the NBA returns. Bud Webb and Danny Ainge proved once again that one good shove truly does deserve another. Ken Norman doled out the league's most expensive kiss. Thanks, uh, that'll be four grand, please. Also among the Tease R Us Club, the X-Man, John Starks. He was kicking mad about his induction. And Sir Charles, not once, but twice. Oh, Adam Keefe to the team rebounds for Carl Malone. And Charles Barkley's gone. Barkley's gone. He's out of here. Sir Charles is gone. Toss that. You have deliveries. How about Harvey Grant? That's a facial. Friend Road Home. In Cleveland. And the Indiana Pacers are sweating Reggie Miller's ailments. We'll update his condition and have lots more when we pound it back inside. Last night, Reggie Miller of the Indiana Pacers involved in this collision with the Pistons, Otis Thorpe and Allen Houston, and it was trouble. Miller suffered a concussion, and when doctors discovered his eye socket had been fractured, surgery was performed, which will keep Miller out at least three weeks and cause him to miss some playoff action. We just uh, finished Reggie's surgery. Everything was absolutely perfect as far as I could tell. Uh, took us about 30 minutes to reconstruct the floor of his right orbit. Uh, no complications, nothing particularly unusual about it. We expect that uh, he'll probably go home tomorrow. Uh, we'll limit his activities for about seven to ten days and, and gradually return him to uh, cardiovascular work. And then Pippen lit into Charles Barkley, saying Sir Charles, quote, kisses the behinds of superstar players, unquote. He adds this, Charles walks around thinking he's the ambassador of the league, but he's a phony person. Until he gets the ring, he's not the ambassador of the league. Until then, I'm considering myself the ambassador. Well, Sir Charles didn't seem shaken by those comments. You know, I was disappointed that uh, Scott had said those things about me, but I would never get mad at a person for voicing their opinion. We're not all supposed to be alike, and I always have always stressed that athletes should be able to voice their opinions like everybody else. So uh, it, I didn't play well on the golf course today. And I think I can attribute it to Scottie Pippen's comments. <laughs> well, maybe it cost Sir Charles three or four strokes, but Kraus saying, they could trade me now and I wouldn't care. My relationship with Kraus is beyond hate. If I'm deserving of the treatment I'm getting, someone tell me why. If not, get me out of here. On Friday, Pippen softened his statement, but not its intent. I'm not trying to insult them in any way. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking from what I feel from my heart and uh, that's exactly how I feel. I mean, uh, I don't think they expect me as a player to work for them the next four years, feeling the way that I feel. 
Well, that is uh, about the length of his contract. Part of his unhappiness, Mike, as we know, is money. You should count Michael Jordan, who's still on the payroll. But this is a guy that does everything well. He's the best all-around player in the NBA. He's leading the NBA in steals and does so many things well. The Bulls would have a dismal record without Scottie Pippen. I think Phil Jackson, above all, would hate to see him go. I mean, you... The morning, never a factor. In foul trouble throughout, 10 points, 2 rebounds, 6 turnovers. Those first two well below his season averages. Zoe choosing just the right words to get him an early shower after fouling out. Chicago Cruz, 102 to 85. And David, obvious. And as long as the hand-checking rule is being enforced, anything we can do about that body-checking rule? We hope so. Otherwise, all players might end up like this. The free throw and the Theo Ratliff missed timeout. Doug Collins livid. Now, this timeout was against Brian Hill's order, so he left the team. He was disgusted with the whole deal. Collins is fine. You want this thing so bad, I'm just going to have my guys stand on the side of the court. Bowie feeds David Vaughn for the easy two. Uncontested. Bowie tried to plead his case with Collins after the game, but the coaches forget about it. I don't want to hear from you at all. Here's Anthony Bowie with his triple-double. I take it any way that, that I could have got it. You know, whether they're going to move over or whether, whatever they're going to do, uh, you know, I'll take it. According to Van Exel, quote, it was a tough call. But bad refs make bad calls, so you expect that from refs like that. I think it was more of a betting call. If the FBI wants to investigate Fresno State, they ought to investigate these refs. Now, for the record, the line in the game was six, so it really didn't matter. Scotty trying to do some damage. Was he looking at me? <laughs> Scotty, a little scary. A little scary on the court, too, with his own miss. He follows it up. Then the fake, the drive. He throws it down to Tomahawk. 17 in the first half for Scotty, but second half is a different... Oh, George Carl obviously did not like the way this one was going. He gives the ref an earful. Carl gets thrown out of the game. The final, 99. Coach John Lucas collides with a player, pushes away, and he gets a technical foul. He was trying to get that thing, though. Anything to get his team fired up. They didn't have it. Hawks debut as the Hawks built an 11-point halftime lead. And then things getting rough a bit for Leitner in the third quarter. A nasty gash in his forehead stopping play, requiring five stitches, and he was a bloody mess. He would return, though. College basketball's dashing big game player, he was the Duke of Durham. As a pro on a struggling NBA club, he's the lone wolf. Christian Leitner's frustration as a Minnesota Timberwolf has led to criticism of teammates in the press and recently a one-game suspension following a profanity-laced tirade against assistant coach Bob Weinhauer. Leitner offers no apologies. Uh, the media up, up around the Timberwolves decided to focus on it and make it a story because they have to blame something. They have to blame our losses and how bad our team is on something. He's not a problem child. You know, people label him that way. It's just that's his way of dealing uh, with losing or frustration. Leitner doesn't care much for the Minnesota media, and the feeling is mutual. He is perceived as arrogant and lacking people skills. But there's no denying his intensity and will to win. Sit near the court, and you'll hear Christian broadcasting. And I think if uh, more players on my team had that intensity where they were just so upset that we were losing, I think that's one of the factors why we lose so much. We just don't have enough intense people on the team, people who are willing to do whatever it takes to win. But he wouldn't get so upset sometimes if he didn't want to win. So he's just a competitor, and um, sometimes competitors are misunderstood. Going for the ball or going for some popcorn? I'm not sure which. You probably get both, though. That if he was wrong, he wasn't wrong alone. My intention was to get his attention, when he didn't, which he didn't give me. And as captain of the team, he must talk to me. And because um, uh, I was asking him why he thought, uh, blew the first technical foul, um, which I only said he fouled me. Come on, he fouled me. Uh, I take full responsibility for my action, and he's going to have to take full responsibility for his, too. Uh, not acknowledge me. As the captain, they must talk to the captain. If I was cussing him out, cursing him out or something, I, I understand that. I think if it had been a veteran referee, it would have happened different. Things would have been a lot different. Well, one of the great debates going on is what's going on with what some feel is a new world disorder in the league. Referee-player relations have never been worse, it seems. And the Cold War is threatening to erupt into a full-scale battle on some court every night, it seems. CNN's Larry Smith has more on what, according to some, has become an alarming trend. Van Exel drew a seven-game suspension and an NBA record $25,000 fine for his action against Ronnie Garretts on Tuesday night in Denver. But he also drew the ire of team leader Magic Johnson, the legend who's wondering where's the league he left behind. 
What a season. <laughs> I've been through more in one year than I have in 11, 12 years with my other squad. I said good call, good call. That's exactly what I said. He gave me a technical foul for that. After that, it really doesn't matter. No matter what I said, no matter what he said, it would have been my fault. I would expect an apology from him also. So if he apologized to me, then I'll apologize to him. There are times we all feel like we want to go out and shove a guy, you know what I'm saying? But uh, that, that just can't happen at our level. So why have official relations turned physical? Lack of respect? Higher stakes? Or is the problem the referees themselves? I think that sometimes an individual will have something personal against a referee. And quite sure the referee has something personal against uh, another individual player. And I think that each time you meet up, it gets hectic and hectic because sometimes, you know, the, the player might show the ref up and the ref might deliberately don't call a, call a foul on the, on the guy. I think it's unfair to the player sometimes when, when a player says something to an official and he says something back, which egg things on, and then, um, you know, the player ends up with the fine and a technical, which is, uh, I think, unfair. Their officials don't have to respect you when they make a call. They're, they're calling the game. But once you go to a official and say something derogatory to him, I mean, he's a human being. And quite naturally, he's going to respond back. If you expect to curse someone out, you got to expect to get cursed back. Some blame egos in the quest for television FaceTime as the culprits. So what's next? Cooler heads or a new set of rules? Or maybe both? When there's a foul call, just like in basic pickup ball, you know, there's always going to be conflict, and that's how it is in this league. Um, just at a higher level, and, and players, things are at bigger stakes, and, uh, you know, things, tempers can flare, and things like that can happen. They got to be smart enough, but I also think that we, as players, as coaches, have got to be smart enough, too, to realize what we're here for. We're here for competition, and that's the way it should be. The referees aren't all wrong with this. I, I happen to think they do a good job. I, yeah, they do a great job. I think it's inability to communicate. You, you Players, this whole new generation, they don't communicate with each other. The older refs and the players, they talk. They talk to Magic. As Magic said, it would not have been a problem had there been two veteran officials mm -hmm. most of the time. Occasionally, you'll get a player, but you're seeing it consistently these days. Bailey. Er versteht es. Er versteht diese Mind Games. Er versteht es. Rashid Wallace ein bisschen aus dem Spiel zu nehmen, unter seine Haut zu kommen. Er hat viel Erfahrung. Jetzt das Foul von Howard Alsi und dann das Zupfen. Greg Anthony macht ein auf Unschutzknall, ganz sicher, aber wer Greg Anthony kennt, er weiß, dass dieser Typ nie unschuldig ist. Und Eisi, richtig nicklich, Twitter sogar. Na, ist zu viel gesagt, aber Haag mit dem Fuß, ne? Okay, zweite Stelle Foul gegen Howard Eisley. Sein viertes insgesamt. gewohnt mit dem Rücken zur Wand zu spielen. Und das haben schon auch in der Vergangenheit öfter bewiesen, dass sie am stärksten sind, wenn es um alles geht. Unstimmigkeiten. Rick Anthony wollte das schon werfen und dann will er nicht den Ball hergeben. Und der Schiedsrichter sagt, das war nicht mein Fehler. Jetzt kann es weitergehen. Anthony an der Linie. Attempted on the first and two of three Hopper on that foul. And then Isley and Williams had words. And Steve Jaffe may have, may have called a technical. 
It was a totally unnecessary play by Brian Williams. The ball had been whistled dead, idly penetration. And after he stopped, Brian Williams came over and put a forearm right into the neck and head of Howard Isley. Well, Howard Isley has been such a key play. Oh, yeah. Well, it looked like Howard Isley anticipated some kind of physical contact, which he got. He had his arm up as well, so a technical foul on Brian Williams. Howard Isley has been so effective in his first stint off the bench, which is usually halfway through the first quarter. In fact, in game five, he engineered a 14-1 Utah Jazz run. He'll get a lot of those shots, Mark. He cannot ever hesitate. Well, when you're guarding Brian Williams, you think of... Well, Brian Williams actually turning, facing on Ostertag, had his head down, tough to make a move like that, but Brian Williams is just so much quicker than Greg Ostertag, even though his fundamentals weren't correct, able to beat him with quickness. But Ostertag doesn't seem to flex his knees when he plays defense. His stay-offs have begun. A little testy, the extracurricular activity, following some of the technical fouls that were handed out late. So. Ja, da versuchen sie Auszeit zu nehmen. Eddie Jones, nachdem er da in die Falle gelaufen war und erste Rangeleien, erste Psychotricks da der Chicago Bulls, um den jungen Guard der Lakers zu verunsichern. Oben zu stehen, 1979 coachte er die Seattle Supersonics zum Titel. Wilkins kam sensible nba pro Mutombo against Cummings. Cummings talking to Mutombo as he goes across the lane and then pushes him and there's going to be a technical foul on Cummings. Cummings was mad at something prior to that. He picks up the technical in addition to the personal foul. By the way Cummings is reacting, John, it's evident that he felt Mutombo did something to him first. Well, it seems that he's certainly lost his cool, and he's explaining it now to the official. He's talking right before that. He was talking to him as Matumbo made his move. Matumbo getting a little dramatic there. Well, yeah, watch him talk now. Right there, he starts talking to him. Well, all I'm seeing is Cummings pushing him around. And then <laughs> Cummings loses his cool. The temptation with a guy like Matumbo is to beat up on him because he's so tall and skinny. And from the experience I've seen uh, with other than Patrick, the Knicks have been very physical with him. So he takes a pretty good beating when he plays against the Knicks. You wonder what happened maybe down the other end of the floor. Yet it didn't appear that Tumble did anything right here. Well, he's, being, he's being pushed there from behind. He starts his move and then Cummings knocks him down. Cummings is not the type of player who gets involved in those type of things on a regular basis by any means. But he's very physical. Right, absolutely. And as is Matumbo with his elbows. But Cummings, you've got to think of a better way to to respond than to play with a new season high for points and a half. More importantly, they lead by 11. And a foul call on Larry Johnson. Well, Larry Johnson treated Matumbo like a rag doll on that play, just threw him to the floor. They don't have the energy. Certainly now the first half, that's been called a flagrant foul on Larry Johnson. And it's Salvatore explaining. The Tumbo will get the two shots, plus the Hawks will get the ball. Crowd delights if the Tumbo's missed, but they call it a flagrant foul. Well, the feeling, I guess, is to push for Tumbo around, but it's giving him time at the foul line. And it's Salvatore, very definitive, very authoritative in explaining his decision. Johnson will sit down. Two fouls. Let's take a look. The right side of your screen. He just shoved him with a forearm. Yes, uh, Larry Johnson. Very physical response to Matumbo. That's the second nick to get involved in a response to Matumbo. Rekazer Blocko. It's obvious he's not 100%, both timing wise and injury wise. Sets up for the jumper. That's a two. Lakner the rebound. And Cummings and Leitner going at it underneath. Cummings already has a technical foul. So any double technical here, Cummings would be tossed and the Knicks would sorely miss him the way he's played. A loose ball foul is going to be called against Terry Cummings. Cummings would be wise to stay away. Bennett Salvatore is yelling at him. Again, Cummings one technical from automatic ejection. He got one earlier. 
Yeah, I would think there'll be no tolerance for any more. Let's see what happened here now. On that shot by Chris Childs, a lot of pushing going on between Leitner. You know, I said I said Leitner, but it was Crawford. It was Crawford and Cummings. Blocking foul called on Charles Oakley. Oh boy. That looked like Oakley had his position in the make changes. This was the scene right after halftime. Steve Smith throwing the towel playfully at Chris Childs. Patrick Ewing wagging his finger at his good buddy Nikembe Mutombo as the teams have some fun with each other. Now, last time these two teams played in New York, Mutombo was a non factor in the game because in the first quarter, he took a shot in the lip and had eight stitches in his lip, and as a result, only played. 14 minutes in the game, did not score, did not rebound. Starks, the pass to Larry Johnson. The Tumbo's presence alters Johnson's thinking, and a technical foul has been called against the Tumbo. Tumbo is broken up. Broken up with left. Wonder if it's a taunting technical. Of course, that finger wagging has been Part of Matumbo's repertoire, he wants to get an explanation from Bennett Salvatore, and he just agreed. Uh, and I think it is taunting. You see, come on, come at me, come at me. And that's taunting tech guy. You know, I like to see that call. That's the type of stuff that gets players upset. And it, it starts guys getting their, their blood boiling and can have problems. Now what he's doing here, that's to the crowd, that's not at a player, that's allowed. Well, people were yelling it out, that's become his uh, symbol of his defensive excellence, which uh, Patrick Ewing is amused by. They are very close. Ewing was in the Hawks locker room before the game quite a while, visiting with his pal. Now Steve Smith guarding Chris Childs. Mookie Blaylock got Allen Houston and Patrick Ewing taking a swipe at the Kevin of the tumble. did not like the hand check and called for a foul. Well, another one of those long Georgetown relationships like Alonzo Mourning. Whenever these three play against each other, traditionally it's been uh, a happy competitive situation. But uh, we saw with Mourning and Ewing, it was very intense in their earlier meetings. And now tonight, Ewing starts off pretty tough. Who's Hawks trail the next 15-13 because he's going against a power forward number one, number two in Charles Oakley, a player who he's had his tussles with. Uh, I'm going to try to come and try to challenge him and my best today and uh, don't try to let myself discourage by all a lot of things that he'd like to do on me and uh, that's what I'm looking for and uh, I know that they like the shoving, the throwing her ball and push you around and uh, don't let you get the easy basket but uh, I'm going to try and come out play like in the same intensity that I played with yesterday and uh, don't let nothing discourage me. Any finger waving from you in his direction, possibly tonight? Oh yeah, yeah. You don't, <laughs> you don't have to forget about that. Definitely, when it will be a block, there will be a finger wave. And a technical. Although he didn't get the technical for finger waving, more of "Come on, let's go." But he did receive a taunting technical earlier. Well, Dikembe better remember because one more technical, and he's in the locker room early again. Two technicals for a player means automatic ejection. Although official can toss a player on the first technical rebound of the first quarter and a chance to cut the lead down to three or two Hanslick travel uh -oh. Fleming Johnson just took a poke at Hanslick as he was moving off the dribble that time caught him right in the face with a forearm that's why the crowd is all upset right now no call but the call was played now you'll see this right oh here we go we have the action coming right now Danny Young at the buzzer Take a look at Bill Hanslick and Clement Johnson just a moment ago. Now here we have Hanslick. Watch him coming on a dribble now. Now watch it right here with the forearm. There it is, right there. No call. That's the end of the first quarter. Dos minutos. ¿Cómo ves la situación, Sisto? Bien, de momento creo que sigue controlando el partido. Si ya te ha tenido un bajón, pero está reaccionando desde que ha puesto otra vez en cancha a Sabri McDaniel y el equipo de los Sonys puede tener controlado el partido, está jugando más seriamente que, que el equipo de Utah. Le han pitado personal en ataque a Cal Malón y el árbitro ordena que se repita el saque. Ahí vemos la jugada repetida. Malón cuando pone ahí el cuerpo es muy difícil quitar. Should tener un NBA. 
tej widocznej elegancji wszystkich prawie kołczów. Nie no. zawsze w jakiejś marynarce. W golfie rzadko jest ubrany w krawat. A właściwie chyba nigdy go nie widziałem. Zapięte koszule. Było, było przewinienie Granta Hilla, wyraźnie przytrzymany biodro Motego Williamsa. Jeszcze reakcja w stosunku do sędziego i przewinienie techniczne. Ciągle nie może się pogodzić z tą decyzją. O właśnie, za takie gesty, o, za te reakcje. Für Karl Malone. Auch der mittlerweile 37 Jahre alt und das ist schon erstaunlich, wie schnell der noch vorne ist. Aber jetzt deutet einiges darauf hin, dass er in dieser Aktion bzw. sein Cheftrainer Jerry Sloan ein technisches Foul bekommen hat. Hat sich da offensichtlich beim Schiedsrichter beschwert. Jerry Sloan ganz erstaunlich. Der dienstälteste Chefcoach in der NBA mittlerweile im 12. Jahr bei den Utah Jazz. Er hat in dieser Saison bereits 15 technische Fouls kassiert. Und damit ist er zurzeit der Spitzenreiter bei den Cheftrainern. Das ist natürlich umso erstaunlicher. Das wäre das Schlimmste, was den Heat passieren könnte. Eine Verletzung ihres Ersatzcenters. Normalerweise ja Power Forward. Brian Grant. Der Block von Mutombo gegen Mason. Passbreak, Iverson mit dem V. Die Kämpfe Motombo bewegt sich für seine 35 Jahre doch recht gut. Ein Spieler, der immer auf seinen Körper geachtet hat, sich gesund ernährt hat und deswegen auch noch topfit ist. Und hier der ungewöhnliche Block mit dem Ellbogen, aber es sah sauber. Expect from here. What tonic is he drinking? <laughs> Sabonis into the paint for Wallace for a foul on Portland. And he's got a technical. Joey Crawford gives him a tee. This is a guy you gotta get away, Rashid. You cannot get thrown out of this game tonight. This now who's over there? Scotty Pippen once again. So you gotta back away from this. This is the first technical he's been hit with since he was thrown out in the third quarter of game one. He played games two, three, and four without incident. Sabonis has got to grab him and get him away. He's continuing to off to Ronnie Nunn. He's inside that three-point line. If he would have missed the free throw, he would have got to shoot another one. You, you cannot be inside that three-point line when a guy's shooting a free throw. Here's the play. Wallace is going to be posting. See if he gets his arm and pushes off. Right there, he shoves off. And then there's the demonstration. I don't All he's doing is embarrassing trying to show us up. It's, I mean, it's easy. It doesn't have anything to do with Rashid. It would be, it would be uh, Joe Klein. It's a Joe Klein did. I know that. All I'm saying is that a call that's a tough call for somebody to take, I mean, the response, I mean, it's just a natural response of who, me? No, it's it not a natural a, response. It's a, it's a, a, what did I do? You, you're picking on me. It's, it doesn't have anything to do with that, right? The Blazers are pleading for the foul. That would foul Kobe out, but it doesn't go that way. Boy, I thought Ronnie Nunn was going to throw that arm out for an offensive foul. That would have fouled Kobe out. Let's watch his off arm here. Now watch as he hangs in the air. Watch his left arm right there. And Mike Dunleavy is upset. Look at him. He knows that would have been it for Kobe Bryant. Gill out leaps Harper for possession, crossover dribble by Kerr into the lane with the left hand over Longley. No! He was hammered and fouled. George Karloff off the bench working Ronnie Garretson. And Ronnie Garretson, I think, is going to give Georgia Tech he will. Yeah, better. Terry stats grabbing Terry if you want to keep in the game. He got the one. George is pretty upset. He's been upset for a long while in this, this first quarter. A lot of guys on the Sonics have taken the ball aggressively to the basket. There's been no fouls called. Take a look at Kendall. He's going to just kind of switch it up to the left hand and watch the body contact, though. I guess Luke Longley, that's where George is complaining. Luke just kind of turns that big caboose into Kendall. Steve Kerr will go to the line. 
You mentioned something. Uh, we had to get away to a, a timeout, though, Marcus, about you like the fact that George is up even after that big play. He wanted a call right, uh, right. A, a moment ago. Now he's up defending Kendall Gill after he gets banged. And uh, as a player, that shows you something. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. He loved that. You see your coach over there just fighting for you and doing battle, going into battle for you. It just makes you.